Welcome to the Greening Casino Training Series produced by Peaks to Prairies and the Western Sustainability and Pollution Prevention Network. In this series, we hear from casino professionals on how to make green by going green. You'll want to watch all 10. In this video, we'll explore LED retrofits, casino challenges, and choosing your supplier. There are some things that are unique to casinos, and uh, I put down here, uh, casino years are like dog years and wear and tear. Um, we are online 24-7. Our lights are never shut down. Uh, our power is never turned off. We're always occupied. So as far as a wear and tear perspective and the amount of hours something lasts, it's really uh, accelerated when it comes to a casino environment. Um, we also have very specific lighting needs, uh, especially when you deal with uh, the video uh, surveillance folks. Uh, they're pretty particular about lighting color, intensity, hues, hot spots in our cameras, things of that sort. and. What we also found out was is if you dim an LED down to a certain point, you get a shutter effect, and it shows up in the video circuits or the video feeds of a casino camera. So you got to be careful there. Um, one of the things that's always important for us is the lighting must always meet the interior design intent. So in other words, we designed this to a specific style of uh, of interiors and the lighting must continue to meet that design intent. So when you're changing your light bulbs out, you want to try to make them as transparent as possible um, so that eventually nobody even thinks that they were changed out. So they can't tell any difference. And um, by uh, default, uh, we are a large energy consumer. Uh, once again, with patina slot machines and lighting and everything else being on 24-7, you know, we suck up a lot of power. Um, my average power load here is about 2.3 megawatts for this casino, and we got about 1,700 slot machines and 65 gaming tables and five restaurants. So, uh, you know, we do suck up a lot of power here. One of the hardest things for me and for my department too was, you know, getting started at this. Um, and the main problem was is trying to match up LED lighting with the existing lightings you know, existing lamps that we have. And uh, that's much easier said than done. Um, as an example, um, the lights over our gaming tables are MR16s. And at, when we first started looking at this, there wasn't an MR16 LED equivalent out there that had a wide enough beam spread to uh, create hot spots or hot lighting spots from showing up on the gaming tables. So that was a huge problem for us until we finally found some LEDs, <laughs> uh, MR16s that actually worked, and uh, they've been a fantastic addition ever since. Because um, every time we had to change one out, we had to re-aim re it and uh, go through surveillance and make sure they all work with the, you know, the cars laid out on the tables. Um, it was a it was it was a major problem for us. So, um, and since we put the MR16s in a year and a half ago, we haven't changed one yet. Uh, they've been pretty bulletproof, which is, you know, a great surprise for me. Um, once again, um, the goal on installing these uh, LEDs is that they're not noticed by the guest employees or cause any operational issues like surveillance or dark spots or things of this sort. And once again, it's a very, you know, sensitive thing. And, you know, nobody says anything when it looks great, but if it doesn't, they'll let you know in a hurry. You look at your suppliers of the products. Um, you look at um, what type of uh, fixtures you have. A lot of time, fluorescent dedicated cans now. You can't even change the bulb to change that. If you can do it up front with LEDs, you're so much better off because uh, the ceiling cans are now dedicated fluorescent cans. So to a retrofit is somewhere between 75 and 100 bucks a can. So if you can do it up front, you're better off. 